Lord, and it's nothing that we take lightly. But God, we're grateful to be in your house. We thank you for your presence that is here even now. And Father, I ask for these brief moments as I stand before your people, Lord, that you would word my mouth. Father, that you would give me what to say and how to say it. Lord, speak through these lips of clay. Lord, let someone be inspired. Let someone be encouraged. Let someone leave here differently than how they came. Lord, it is your word that is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our pathway. Lord, that you would give us which way to go, Lord, how to walk, how to talk before you, Lord. Let the seed of the word take root in our hearts on today, Lord. And let someone leave your chain saying, surely I have been in the presence of the Lord. And God, we will be careful and mindful to give your name the praise. We will give your name the glory. We will give your name the honor for all that is said and done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 You all may be seated in the, amen, the presence of the Lord at this time. Just grateful for another day God has allowed us and blessed us to see. Amen. Just grateful to be in his house one more time. Amen. And I just wanted to just, amen, personally say thank you, amen, to all of those who uh, met us over at St. John, amen, on last Sunday. Amen. I was um, grateful and just blessed and humbled to see your faces in the audience. I said it made it a lot easier, amen, seeing familiar faces sitting out there. Amen. I said, you know what, if they don't like me, Amen. I have to go back, and I got a church I go to every Sunday. Amen. So I, I was just glad. Amen. Glad to see you all come in such a great way. As a matter of fact, they were quite impressed. I was there sitting with the pastor and his uh, one of the ministers there at the church, and they said, y'all got a good number of people. I said, yes, sir. The Lord has blessed us. Some of them were playing hooky. Amen. <laughs> But y'all were there. Amen. So those of you all who were there, amen. Thank you all for being there. I mean, it was a great blessing. I thank the Lord. Someone was asking me, were you nervous? And the truth of the matter is, I was in the beginning. Amen. But the Lord, as a presence of the Lord, and the Lord was in that place also that Sunday. And the Spirit of the Lord was there. Amen. As the Spirit of the Lord began to move, you know, I just felt it just ease on out of there. The Lord just did what he was going to do and said what he wanted to say. Amen. So, again, thank you all for... Um, being there for me and with me, amen, on last Sunday. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to, amen, Matthew the 14th, I'm sorry, Matthew the 5th chapter. Matthew the 5th chapter. And don't put your Bibles too far away. There was another scripture that I wanted to, amen, look at on today as well. But Matthew the 5th chapter, amen, starting at the 14th verse. Amen. Matthew, the fifth chapter, starting at the 14th verse. Amen. Amen. Matthew, the fifth chapter, starting at the 14th verse. Amen. And when you're there, you can say amen. 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 Do me a favor. Just stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Matthew... Fifth chapter, 14th verse. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, so it might read slightly differently than what some of you have. Amen. And it reads, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Verse 16, in the same way, Jesus said, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. And I want to read the first verse one more time for emphasis. It says, Jesus said, you are the, the I'm sorry, the 14th verse. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Amen. May God have a blessing to the reading, the hearing of his word. Amen. You all may be seated at this time. And I'm just going to speak briefly today. Amen. From the subject, light carriers. Amen. Light carriers. Amen. And, and Jesus said, and here's the thing. And I want you to get this in, in your mind and understand. The day that you got saved, if you will visualize God lit a flame, lit a light down on the inside of you and gave you a directive and said, 
Go light up the world. That is his directive to you. There's a light on the inside of you. And he said, my directive to you is go into the world and light up the world. Amen. And Jesus said, you all, believers, if you're a believer, let me see your hand today. Amen. If you're a believer, he said, you are the light of the world. Now, mind you, the world does not see it that way. Amen. Because they will call you judgmental, uh, intolerant, Bible thumpers, old-fashioned, but they don't call you the light. Understand? Uh, but Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And we live in a dark world. Amen. Uh, uh, you don't have to look around too far if you've been paying attention to the news. I believe there was just two mass shootings just this week. Amen. And we live in a world that is full of darkness. And here's the thing. Uh, though the world doesn't always understand believers, uh, they don't realize as dark as this world is right now, it could be a, light, a lot darker if it was not for the believers. Amen. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. As a matter of fact, you have something in you that the world needs. Now, there are some people in the world doesn't, don't realize that they need what you have. And as a matter of fact, many of them don't want what you have. Amen. And that is because light makes people uncomfortable. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm a, I want to help you understand you today. Light makes people uncomfortable. Amen. And, and some of y'all, you know, we haven't always lived in, in, the, in the nicest of, nicest of houses. Amen. And when we lived in myself, we lived in some old houses. And so those houses had some house guests in them. Amen. Called cockroaches. And some of y'all going to act bougie this morning and act like, you know, I don't know what he's talking about, but that's all right. I have some witnesses in here today that, you know, in, in the middle of the night, you know, you'd go to get something and, and your house guests were up. And when you would turn the light on, what would happen? Oh, so yeah, some people know what I'm talking about. The house guests, the cockroaches would scatter when the light came on. And that is the effect that light has on those that are in sin. And there's a reason why. I want you to turn with me to John the third chapter. Amen. John the third chapter. Amen. John the third chapter in the 19th verse. And if you've ever wondered why this happens, John, the third chapter, 19th verse. Amen. Jesus said, you all are the light of the world. Go into the world and let your light shine among men in all of this darkness. John, the third chapter and the 19th verse. Amen. And when you're there, you can say amen. And, and it says, and the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it. For their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see what they are doing and what God wants. People hate the light because their deeds are evil. And if the light shines, they say everybody's going to see what it is that I'm doing. My misdeeds, my sins. And see, here's the thing. Amen. If you ever pay attention and notice most places where sin abounds the most, naturally speaking, are in darkness. And I mean in darkness because we got lights on here today. But if you go to the club, it's, oh, he said it's dark in there. How do you know? Huh? <laughs> Listen. When you go to the club, the lights are out. It's dark. It's dim. You go to the bar. It's dim and dark in there. 
Amen. You go to gentlemen's clubs. Y'all know what I'm talking about, some of y'all. Amen. It's dark in there. See, because you could be in there with somebody that is not your husband or your wife and nobody's going to know. You off in the corner and it's dark. You go to the casinos and it's dark. Most places where sin abounds. Amen. It's dark. And when it's time to go, they turn the lights on. Time to get out. That is, there's a reason for that. Because people feel comfortable. Nobody sees me. Nobody knows what I'm doing, what I'm drinking. Oh, and some of y'all, you know, you went to the movies with your little girlfriend and you wait till the lights went out before you made your move. Come on. Y'all don't want to talk. Amen. You pretending like you yawn and trying to get your arm around her. Hey? When the lights go out. Why? Nobody sees what it is that I'm doing. And wherever darkness is, sin abounds the most. Amen. When most people get into trouble, most crimes are committed after dark. Amen. There's a crude saying that all, some of the old saints used to say, and I'm not going to say the full thing, but some of y'all know what I'm talking about. They would say, well, nothing good open after uh, two o'clock in the morning, except and I'm not going to say the rest of it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. And some of you, if you're honest, some of the dirt that you did, some of the mischief that you did was in the dark. Amen. And if you couldn't, if, if it wasn't dark, it could have been in the middle of the day. You went and found you some darkness. What do I mean? You went off into a room. You went into your apartment and shut the door. Amen. Pull the blinds down. Amen. Got up under the cover. Why? To hide what it was that you were doing. But now you are in the light. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Now you are in the light. And as a matter of fact, more than that, you are a light carrier. Amen. And I know that that sounds exciting. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing to say. I am a light carrier. You can say that about yourself. I want y'all to say this. Say, I am a light carrier. Amen. And that sounds wonderful. But the truth of the matter is that title should come with a warning. Amen. It should come with a disclaimer that says you are subject to be misunderstood. Amen. That title light carrier should come with a disclaimer that says subject to be rejected. Amen. Because Jesus himself was a light carrier. As a matter of fact, he was the light. And the Bible said the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And they rejected the light of the world. Amen. And so here's the thing. We come into this marvelous light and God ignites a flame down on the inside of us and gives you a directive and says go out there and light up the world. Go in the midst of darkness and let your light so shine among men. Let them see the light. And you go out and be the light but something strange happens when the light comes on the scene amen because all of a sudden when you come around they say hide the beer huh they say hide the weed amen all of a sudden you come around and everybody was laughing and they in the middle of telling a joke and they say shh, 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 shh. here she comes hold on shh. wait a minute let's go over here amen as I've had the experience let's go eat at this table we don't want shh and you say What's wrong? Everybody used to like me. I was the life of the party. They don't want to call me. They don't want to talk to me. They don't want to uh, be around me. You know, and I, I remember Pastor Johnson, I hope he don't mind. I remember him telling the story. We were in, in spiritual empowerment, and he's told it time before that he goes back to East Texas where he's from. And he got his family there and they go hunting and they go fishing. And these are people that he grew up with. And he said that he went to visit one time and he was there. And he said he got up and everybody was gone. Am I telling it right? He said they had went off and left him. And he said that one of them told him he, he couldn't understand. Why, man, why, no, and why would y'all leave me? And he said one of them told him, man, you mess up a good can of beer. Now, these are the people who know you, understand what I'm saying. These are the people that know your nicknames. 
These are the people that know your stories and your history and the stuff that you used to do. And when they don't want to be around you, something's going on. But I want you to understand before you get your feelings hurt and before you begin to wonder too much, it is not you. It is the light that you are carrying on the inside of you. It's not you. It is the light that is on the inside of you. Amen. It's the same reason that Jesus came around and demons began to scream and said, what, what have we to do with thee before our time? Why have you come to torment us? And some of us would have been, uh, you know, said, what's wrong with this man screaming at me like that? I don't understand. But it was not him. It was the fact that he was a light. And all of a sudden, light came on the scene and began to shine in darkness. And they could not understand what was going on. But it is the light that is on the inside of you. But just on a human level, nobody likes to be rejected. Amen. Amen. I've never heard anybody say, I just love it. Amen. When people see me coming and go the other way. Amen. I've never heard anybody say, oh, it just makes me feel so wonderful when people stop returning my phone calls or when they avoid me because they don't want to hear about God or they say, you know what, it makes me, I, I feel wonderful when they call me a holy roller. Amen. A Bible thumper, oh, it makes me feel so great. Amen. When they say, I don't, I don't want to hear it, don't tell me nothing else about God. I've never heard anybody say that. Amen. And rejection, it doesn't feel good to anybody. I, and I found that and I've been there myself that all of a sudden when people push back on what you're trying to do. And sometimes you say, I'm just trying to help them. Amen. I'm just trying to tell them the truth. I'm just trying to uh, get them to where I am. The same light that was shining in my life. I'm trying to expose them to them. I'm trying to tell them the truth. I want them to know the way that I'm walking now. The peace that I have. The joy that I have. That is available to them. I'm just trying to throw them a life preserver. Amen. Lord knows that I can't swim. And if you see me drown and you got a life preserver, I'd have a problem with you if I lived after the fact. But I'd have a problem if you didn't throw it to me. And you said, I'm just trying to throw them a life preserver. I'm just trying to help. And they, they push back. They reject the truth. And it does not feel good. Amen. Amen. And so oftentimes when we reject it, the response that we have is, well, maybe I should stop being just a little less preachy amen maybe I should stop telling my testimony amen maybe I, sh I do talk a little bit too much about God about Jesus maybe I do quote too many scriptures or, or, or maybe I should just reel it back because as they say you know there's two things you shouldn't talk about y'all know what I'm saying politics and religion that's what they say but you'll talk about everything else won't you under the sun and so you say maybe I should but what you're really saying is maybe I should hide my light amen maybe I should hide the light when Jesus commanded you let your light shine everywhere I go we used to sing everywhere I go y'all know that song I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go what I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine then why put it under a basket amen why why cover it up God said in the in the in the in the break room at work Amen. You ought to let it shine. When they come in on Monday morning talking about, oh my God, let, let the stuff that I got to do, my hangover just wore off. You ought to let your light shine so much the more. And tell them, you know what? I praise God in church yesterday. That's what I did. Amen. In the schoolhouse, when they're talking about everything else and, you know, and gender conforming and all of that stuff, you ought to tell them about Jesus. He said, let your light so shine among men. You know, and I, I thank God. Amen. Mother Evans, raise your hand. Amen. Those that don't know her. She was a teacher in the public school system for many years. Amen. And she told the testimony. You know what? You ought to be the same for God everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. There's not, there should not be the you that we see in church. And there might be for some of us. Amen. What was his name? Mr. Jekyll and Hyde, what is it, Hyde? Yeah. yeah, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, amen. There should not be two of you. The two, that, the one that we see on Sunday morning, amen, and then the one that we see at school. 
Amen. The one we see, amen, at church and the one we see at work. Amen. But, but this woman of God was a teacher in the public school system. And the, the way you see her in church, amen, is the way she is everywhere. In the grocery store, amen. And in the schoolhouse. And Mother Evans let her light shine. She, it don't matter where she's at. We were in Memphis in, in, in Willie Moore's barbecue. Amen. And she said, let's pray. Amen. And the Holy Ghost came in at Willie Moore's. Amen. And, and she let her light shine. But even in the school system. Amen. She told the testimony she would lay on the floor of her classroom and pray. She would pray for the students. She would pray for the staff and the faculty. Amen. In public. Amen. And they didn't like it. And she was told, you're going to have to stop doing that. You're going to have to stop praying like that. We don't want to come in your classroom and catch you laid out on the floor praying like that. Amen. You're going to have to stop praying with these students. There is a separation, they say, between church and state. But she kept letting her light shine. And she told the testimony one day that the principal called her into the office and said, I said, I told you about that praying stuff and that I told you about praying in your classroom and praying for the teachers and praying for the students and she told him well I'm praying right now and he <laughs> and the principal told her get out and she lost her job over that but you know what her light is still shining And God is still being glorified because somebody will look at you and say, what, you went to school, you got a degree, you got a certification, and you were willing to lose that for what? And that's when you say, his name is Jesus. That's what it is. <laughs> Let your light so shine among men that they will see, wait a minute, she's willing to lose her job over this. Wait a minute, he's willing to have people call him crazy and say he's lost his mind. What is it? And you say, that's when you say, to God be the glory. It is not me, but it is the light that shines on the inside of me. And what the enemy was trying to do, and I, 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 I understand some people may have a different thought, but he said, you know what, I'm going to try to find a way to get her to, to not let her light shine because it's so crazy. You can do anything and everything else now. Openly. I mean, we got a whole month called Pride Month. And you just show whatever you are and, and live your truth. And, and if that's how you feel, and if you feel like a woman today, then you're a woman. And use the women's restroom and do whatever you feel like. If you feel like a dog, you can have your name legally changed to Fido. You know, and it doesn't matter. But to name the name of Jesus... And to let your light shine all of a sudden has become an offense. But I'd rather be an offense to man and be pleasing to God. Amen. I'd rather let my light shine and have people call me crazy because one day I promise you this. Somebody's going to come looking for that thing that you're trying to hide. Amen. Somebody's going to come looking for that thing and say, you know what? I, I, you know, I, I don't know what it is about you. And you've always been different. And you've kept to yourself. And I don't hear you cussing like everybody else. And I see you pull your Bible out at break time. And I see you praying. And I don't know what it is. But I've got some issues. And this has happened to me going on in my life. And I need an answer. And I've gone to the psychologist. And I've taken the medication. And I don't feel any better for it. Is there an answer? What is it about you? Why do you have so much peace? Why do you have so much joy? And there goes your opportunity to flip the light switch and tell them the light that you see is God. And I've been there, I even just at, at my job, you know, and, and this is, I'm telling you what I know. We were there, and there was a young man that I worked with who had a uh, condition that caused, it was Bell palsy, and his mouth was drooping. And we were standing there. I have a witness that was there that day. And, and they had already talked to him and prayed. Now, I'm a pastor, mind you. Y'all know that. Why did I even tell you that? Uh, but someone, he said, you know, they said, would, would you pray for him? And we out in the open. Now, mind you, 
in an open walkway, people all around us, just walking and talking and all of that. And they said, would you pray, pray for him? You know, lay hands on him, be able pray for him. And in my flesh, they had already prayed something. They said, well, they already prayed, you know, just according to their faith. Let it be so. You don't need it, you know. And I even said, I said, well, they already prayed. Their prayers are just as good as mine. And I felt myself backing up a little bit. And something within me said, what, is, what are you doing? And so we all, Brother Fabian was there, we all gathered around and, and laid hands and began to pray, Lord, the Lord's healing virtue flow through this young man and God fixed the condition and all that. And I had my eyes shut just praying. And you not know a woman pulled me to the side and I didn't know anybody was looking. And she pulled me to the side and she said, I was so happy to see that. She said, to see Men like that gathered around and praying together. You don't know what that did for me. You do not know who is watching you. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. But hold up the light and say, you know what? This world is getting darker by the day. And I want you to know, Lord, I thank you. The darker that it gets, the brighter our light needs to shine. And the enemy's desire, he said, you know what, if they, if, even if they let their light shine, he said, you know what, I'll f- try to find a way to diminish that light. What does he do that? He said, I'll load them down with burdens. Sometimes it's sin. Sometimes it's habits. Because see, here's the thing. I looked at my wife's van the other day, and she's got some of that oxidation. Some of y'all know what that is. On the, the glass, on the headlights. And at night, it's noticeably dimmer the light is noticeably dimmer because of that fogginess that comes over the glass on there but here's the thing there's nothing wrong with the bulb there's nothing wrong with the bulb behind the glass it's still shining just as powerful as it ever has but that fogginess the oxidation has caused that light to be dim. And this is why God said, we need to come to God and say, Lord, clean me up. (laughs) Whatever it is that is causing my light not to shine the way that it ought to. If it's my mouth, Lord, scrub this mouth out. Huh? If it's my nasty attitude, Lord, clean me up because the light is there. And God said, it's my desire that it shine." But Lord, whatever it is that sent me, we used to say, shine the spotlight from heaven on my soul. If there's anything that's not like you, take it out and strengthen me. God said, wash me that I may shine the way that others may see your light clearly. Because the light is there, don't fool yourself. The light is there. He said, I desire that men see the light in you. And whatever it is, that's why it's my prayer. Because there's so many pastors that because of the way they live their life outside of the pulpit, amen, it's just diminished the light of the gospel. But it's my desire, Lord, help me to walk upright in a way because they can say, oh, you know how these preachers are. They try to say it at work. All they worry about is money. They tell me at work. I say, well, you talking to the wrong one because I'm not after money. I'm after souls. But Lord, don't let me do anything and live my life in such a raggedy way that the light that you place down on the inside of me is not shining as clearly as it can. Because people need to know, Lord, that there there is hope, there's joy, there is peace, there is an answer, and that answer is Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. Amen. And he's ever shining in my soul. Amen. God has given us a commandment. And even this day, amen, it ought to be our prayer. Lord, the light. Some of us, it's gone down to a pilot light. Y'all remember that? We used to have to light it. Amen. It's just barely flickering. Amen. It's a pilot light. But nonetheless, it is there. And God said, I want you to let that light shine. Amen. You need to put some gasoline and some kerosene on that light. Amen. And ignite it because the world is looking for answers. In the midst of all this darkness, is there an answer? Because they say there's a trouble in the White House and trouble in God's house. Amen. 
and they're looking for an answer. Amen. And you have it on the inside of you. Amen. Down in your belly, there's a light that the world needs. And God desires that it shine and say, Lord, whatever it is. Amen. Even on this day, whatever it is that's hindering this light that you put on the inside, even if it's my fear that I don't want to, I don't want to talk too loud. I don't want anybody to hear the God. They need to hear the truth. Everybody else is loud with their truth and you have the truth. You have the truth. And how can you not tell somebody else? You have the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am. See, when you say amen.